Good afternoon, morning, evening, uh, whatever time of day it happens to be for you. If you're watching this, you know a lot of people will be watching this on replay. Hope everybody's having a great day, whatever day it happens to be for you. Tell me your location in the comment section. We're going to get into this. We're going to get started in about 30 seconds. I don't like to take too much time in the, in the lead up to these. I just get into it. People come in when they come in and they catch whatever part they catch. So as y'all coming in, uh, shout out your location in the comment section and we're going to get into it. For those of you who are not familiar with me, I'll introduce myself in a second and we're going to get going. What's going on, Ron? As y'all coming in, shout yourselves out. We're going to get started in like 15 seconds. Take another sip of water. I'm going to introduce myself, introduce the topic. You want to get into the topic. I'll recap it. And then that's that. We got Coral Gables in the building. Shout out to Coral Gables. It's a nice neighborhood. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin. Many know me as Dre all day. from a nine-year pro athlete, author of 33 books, done four TED Talks. Create this whole brand and framework and business called Work On Your Game, where what I do here is we take the tools to help athletes get to the top 1% in sports, and we translate those tools over to the business world to help professionals like yourselves perform at your highest possible level, do it consistently, and make money in exchange for doing that. Right? I thank all of you. If you are an entrepreneur or you are a, uh, you're an entrepreneur or you plan on becoming an entrepreneur, you do what you do to make money. And even if you're not an entrepreneur, you work at a, a nine to five job. Only reason you work at that job is because they pay you, right? You don't work there. You don't work there out of the kindness of your heart. Now, you might love the job, but you wouldn't keep working there. If they weren't giving you money, right? So we're all in this to make money in some way, shape or form. So what we're going to talk about here today is productivity. We're going to talk about keys to being more productive. This is a, a big thing in the world that we live in today, simply because we have so many things to distract us from our productivity, from our actual jobs, that getting back on the track of productivity would probably help a lot of you get a lot more done. You produce a lot more results and you probably will make more money simply because you'd be serving more people at a higher level simply because you're getting more done with them and for them because you are just being more productive than you maybe have been up to this point. So these devices that we have here allow us to be distracted all the time. So our getting back to our productivity probably help us a lot. Now, I want you to understand before we even get into this, that there's a difference between product productivity and effectiveness. Productivity means you are producing something. It, it doesn't really matter what you produce. As long as you produce something, you are being productive. Effectiveness, on the other hand, means that you are actually producing a specific outcome. Now, I'm an advocate of effectiveness being actually more important than productivity because you can produce a whole lot of nonsense. You can produce a whole lot of stuff that doesn't really move the needle and get you where you want to go. So I'm going to do what I'm going to do here today and talk about productivity based on the assumption that you already know what's effective for you. So when you know what makes your productivity effective because they, they work hand in hand, you want to be productive at things that are effective not just productive at things just to say that you produce them. You can produce a whole lot of things that, again, don't move you forward. So assuming that you have that taken care of, you know what effective is, Here's we're going to talk about some ways to be more effective. I got about 10 points I'm going to share here today. Maybe I'll get through all 10. We'll see how much time I want to take on each point. So let's get into this. Keys to productivity. And by the way, for those of you who don't know, let me put this in here before we even get started. I send out a text message every day called the Daily Motivation. You want to get this. Every morning, all you got to do is text me at my number. I don't know why. I'm trying to put the, uh, no, there it is. If you want to get the daily motivation text every morning, just text me at that number that I just put in the chat, and you'll be getting that every single day. And I have a podcast called Work On Your Game, which comes out every day. That's also free. Y'all know how the podcast works. So if you just subscribe to the podcast by going to that website right there, then you'll get that every single day. Now let's get into this topic here. Number one point, we are talking about being more productive, and these are not in any particular order, but some of them are more important than others. You can decide, and once you use them, you'll see. Number one, pay less attention to what other people are doing. Number one way for you to be a more productive individual is stop paying so much attention to other people's business. Whatever another person is doing is not your business, is not your responsibility. You really don't need to know about it. So if you pay less attention to other people's stuff, you'll get a lot more done. So if you look at your smartphone, and many of you are watching this on your phones right now, so you can't do it. But if you look at your phone, I'm looking at my phone right now and the apps just on the, the main first screen of my uh, phone. And I'm looking at all the apps that are telling me about what everybody else got going on. So email, 
is other people telling you their agenda, text message, other people telling you their agenda, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, let me see what we got in here. LinkedIn, Facebook, Clubhouse, Snapchat, TikTok, WhatsApp, just on those alone. All right, just that's a lot. And those take up a whole lot of time. So if you look at the screen time app on your phone, which tells you how much time you spend on each app, it'll tell you how much time you spend looking at stuff that's based on other people telling you what they're doing, which has nothing to do with what you're doing. So the number one thing you can do to up your productivity is what we call addition by subtraction. You get more time to produce on your own if you stop paying so much attention to what everybody else is producing on their own, what other people have going on. Pay less attention to what other people are doing. This is about focus. You should always remember that focus is a force multiplier. I talked about this in an episode on my podcast, episode 1193, focus being a force multiplier. You can only focus when you are paying attention and you can't pay attention if your attention is going towards somebody else's stuff because a human being has a limitation that we can only focus on one thing at a time. So what are you paying? What are you giving your attention to? Anything that you focus on, folks, you'll get better at. By default, you'll get better at it because the human brain is the most powerful tool known to man. You put your brain on anything, you'll do better at it than if your brain is only partly paying attention to that thing. So even if you're not good at it, if you pay more attention to learning a skill, even if you don't have any kind of formal training at it, you'll probably get better at it just because you're focused on it because you're paying attention to it. Now, if you get some actual training and some actual help from someone who knows what they're doing, then you might actually become effective at it. Again, there's a difference between effective and productive. But when you pay more attention to something, you'll usually get a better result because you're putting your most powerful tool, which is your brain, to it. So you got to make sure that you're not allowing yourself to get sucked into the rabbit hole of paying attention to other people's stuff. And here's the challenge is that social media apps are designed to get you to pay attention to other people's stuff. So it's like you're in a battle. They're trying to pull you this direction. You're trying to go in that direction. So you, what you want to do is not try to fight the current, but set up a structure that makes it easy for you to get off that get off of paying attention to other people's stuff, which means limit the amount of time you spend scrolling through social media or not allowing yourself to get caught up in the rabbit hole of scrolling through social media. Some people use their applications these days, and I think the phones even have them built in now, where you could put like a certain amount of time you could spend on an app before it doesn't let you get into the app, and then you would have to override it in order to get in there. I was somewhere, where was I? I can't remember where I was, a couple of weeks ago, and I saw somebody's phone. I could see the face of their screen, and it said, hey, you've reached your maximum limit for Facebook browsing for the day. And then it had an option to override that limit so that they can get into Facebook. I don't know if they got into it or not, but I could see it was shown on their screen. Like you've reached the maximum limit. So some people use things like that. I don't use those kind of things. But if that is, works for you, if that's the structure that will make the most sense for you so you can have more time it's for you to focus on your stuff, then go ahead and do it. Whatever works. Remember, what we're talking about here is results. You want a results and performance based business or whatever allows you to produce results, you need to be doing it. And what produces helps me produce results might not be the same as what helps you produce results, but you need to know what that is for you. And that's what you need to focus on. Number two, we are talking keys to productivity here, people. Number two, the same things, the same way every time. Let me say it again. The same things, the same way every time. This is about process. That means whatever you're going to be doing where you are, you need to produce a similar result. A consistent result, you need to have a consistent process for producing that result. Simple as that. You do not need to change up your process or change up your style or change up your formula every single time you do something if you're doing the same stuff over and over again. You're doing the same stuff over and over again. It should look the same and feel the same damn near every single time. I'll give you an example. Any of you ever been to a, a fast food restaurant? Any one of them. McDonald's is usually the example that I use because they're the most popular. They you know, sold the most burgers. Any McDonald's you go to, in the United States at least, everything's going to be exactly the same. The process will be the same. Stores might be designed a little bit different. The humans who work there might, be, might look a little bit different and sound a little bit different, but the process is pretty much the same. You order the food. There's somebody in the back who makes it. They send it up, and it comes out looking and tasting exactly the same. If you get a burger in Detroit or if you get a burger in Houston or you get some fries in L.A. or you get a McFlurry in New York, it all comes out exactly the same. Why is this? Is it because the people who work there are geniuses and they're communicating with each other about exactly what to do? The answer to those are no and no. The reason why everything comes out exactly the same is because McDonald's has a very, very tight process that it doesn't such that it doesn't matter who works there. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. It doesn't matter where 
it's located in, in America, everything's going to come out the same way. The cheeseburger is the same. The McFlurry is the same. The fries are the same. The filet of fish is the same. Why? Because McDonald's as a company has created this process that's so good that anybody can go work at McDonald's. So you who's watching this right now could go work at McDonald's today and within a week, you would have that you would have the process down to a science to where you could do it pretty much in your sleep. Why? Because McDonald's has a system that all you got to do is plug into the system. All they do is take you, the person, and they plug you into the system. That's it. And McDonald's has such a good system that now you, you're noticing they're starting to eliminate the people. Y'all notice that? McDonald's is starting to, to eliminate the humans. So you go on McDonald's now. I haven't been in a McDonald's in America in a while, but I was in Europe a year, two years ago. And when I was in Europe, I went into a McDonald's because I just wanted to see how it was different than the ones in America. And I was surprised to see that they didn't even have a line of people working at the registers when you walked in. They had a bunch of you know, touchscreen electronic boards, and that's where you ordered your food at. And maybe they had already been doing this in America. I just didn't know about it because I never go inside of McDonald's. But this is what I saw when I was in Europe. And it's coming to America as well because I, I know they're starting to have more and more of those to where the people who used to work the front line registers at McDonald's, now they don't need them anymore. Now they just got maybe the people in the back and maybe a manager or something like that. And guess what? If you work at a place like that, eventually they're going to replace the people in the back too because the stuff that gets made in the back is actually easier to it's easier to create a process for that than it is for the stuff that happens in the front. So making the burgers, making the filet of fish, making the fries, McDonald's, I guarantee you, there's someone who works for the McDonald's corporation or a consultant who's been hired or something like that, who right now, this very minute, is working on a process for which they can eliminate the cooks and the people who work in the back at McDonald's so that they don't need humans anymore. And a machine can make your burger, a machine can set up your Big Mac, a machine can make your filet of fish. And that way it comes out literally exactly the same every single time. I guarantee you that they're working on that right now. The whole point is when you have a process of anything you're going to be doing over and over again, you, you want to make that process so tight that it comes out the same way and things work the same way over and over and over and over again. When you have a process, good news is for you as a human being, you don't have to use any of your brain power to think about what to do. This is a good thing about a process. You don't have to think about what to do because it's the same stuff over and over because what happens is not that your brain completely shuts off, but what happens is your habits take over. And what is a habit? A habit is simply something that you do over and over again, and you do it so often that your subconscious mind takes over the task and you don't have to consciously think about it anymore. So here's an example of that. Uh, any of you who is wearing shoes today that have laces, did you have to think about how to tie your shoes this morning when you put them on? Probably not. Why? Because you tied your shoes so many times that habit has taken over and your unconscious mind takes over the process of tying your shoes. You tied your shoes without even consciously thinking about it. So in the moment that you were tying your shoes this morning, the 10 seconds that it took for you to do it, you probably weren't even thinking about the fact that you were tying your shoes because you've done it so many times that your subconscious mind, your instincts, your habits took over that task. And you don't have to think anymore. So now you can save your conscious brain power for something that might require you to actually make a decision and you actually have to think. Whereas tying your shoes, you don't have to think about it because you've done it over and over. If you brushed your teeth this morning, you probably didn't have to think about it because you've done it so many times. If you made you no know, breakfast and you eat the same kind of breakfast every day, you don't have to think about it because you've done it over and over again. So I want you all to understand that when I talk about process, sometimes people hear that and it makes you think that I'm talking about something that is super complex. And a process can be super complex, but it doesn't have to be. A process is just anything that you do over and over again to the point that your subconscious mind takes over the task and you don't have to consciously think about what you are doing anymore. And the more of these that you can put in place in your life, the more brain power you save for yourself so that you have more power for the big decisions. And the more that you can get the, the routine things done over and over again easily, and you get them done a lot more quickly because the subconscious mind works faster than the conscious mind. So when you're consciously processing a thought, it is very fast, but it's not as fast as the subconscious. The subconscious processes thoughts faster than the conscious mind. So anything that you can make habitual and process based, you'll get it done a whole lot faster. This is why successful businesses have things like standard operating procedures. Or they call them SOPs, standard operating procedure, which is what? It's basically the habits and routines that they want everybody who works there to get into. All right, this is what we want you to do. If this happens, do this. If that happens, do that. If somebody says this, you say that. If somebody asks this question, here's how you answer it. They have standard operating procedures because they want things to happen the same. They want the same things the same way every time. And you 
personally, you need to have your own standard operating procedures. And the more things that you can make into a standard procedure, again, the more brain power you will save for the bigger decisions where you do need to think about things and the faster you'll be able to get things done because you're, again, putting your subconscious mind to work instead of putting your conscious mind to work. You can be a lot more productive and a lot more efficient in your productivity when you do that. Point number three, we're talking product keys of productivity here. Number three, set routines and do not allow anything to break your routines. What is a routine? A routine is, this is a discipline point here. A routine is similar to what we just talked about here is as a process point. Let me get the definition of the word routine. So we all are talking about the same thing. So definition from Zapier.com says, Routines are a collection of habits or actions that you do on a regular basis to bring order to your day. This is actually a pretty good definition. I like that definition. Why is that? Why do routines matter? Routines matter because, again, similar to what we just talked about, when you are doing the same things over and over and over again, this, first of all, brings normalcy to your life and your day so that you're not doing random different things every single day. It creates consistency. It allows you to be persistent at what you do when you know, you know what you're working on, exactly where you're trying to get to. And this builds discipline. Remember that structure creates discipline, folks. Discipline does not create structure. Structure creates discipline. So a routine is a form of a structure. A routine, it can be something as simple as here's how I, I lay my clothes out before I if I know I'm going to go to the gym first thing in the morning. I lay my clothes out the night before of what I'm going to wear to the gym. That's a routine. If you have a process for how you set up, like when I record episodes in my podcast, I have a process for what I do. I set the camera up, then I get my notes ready, then I get the whatever I'm going to record, the software I'm recording on, I make sure my lighting is right, and then I hit the record button and I start recording. That is a routine. So understand that routines, again, do not need to be some big, um, complicated thing. A routine can be a big, complicated thing, but it doesn't need to be. Routines can be very simple and routines can be very complex. But when you have a routine in place, that discipline is a result of the structure. Again, make sure you get that in the right order. So routines build habits. And when you have good habits, you usually produce good outcomes. And keep in mind, I talked about this in my book, Work On Your Game, which is that book right there. You get that at workonyourgamebook.com. Your habits are like your employees. They're like your staff. So any of you who doesn't have anybody working for you, you don't have any employees on the payroll, understand that you actually do have employees on the payroll. They're called your habits. Your habits are your employees. Why? Because your employees are representing you to the world. If you follow my metaphor here, and if you don't like the representation that you are putting out into the world, then what you need to look at is not look at the world. What you need to do is look at your habits. What habits are producing this outcome right now? So if you're not in the kind of shape that you want to be physically right now, you need to ask yourself, what habits are producing this result? If you're not making the kind of money you want to make right now, you need to ask yourself, what habits are producing this result? If you don't like any aspect of your life, anything you have going on, personally or professionally, first thing you should ask yourself is, what habits do I have or I, am I allowing that are creating this specific outcome? And how can I change these habits so I can start getting the outcomes that I want? When you change your habits, it changes your results. And habits are a result of routines. And those all come from structure. So if you don't have healthy habits right now, it's probably because you don't have the right structures in place. So, but you can change those at any time. All routine is is a structure for what you're going to do over and over again that produces habits, that produces discipline, discipline produces your outcomes. All right, everybody got that? So anything you're going to do consistently, get conscious about laying out a routine for how to do it. If you know you're going to do something every day, create a routine for how to do it. If you know every time you get on a, for example, every time I get on a plane, if I know I'm going to the airport and I got to get on a flight or I'm going to get on a flight, I know there are certain things I need to pack in my luggage. So what did I do? I went in my notes app. I'll show you. So I went in my notes app in my phone and I created a packing list. So here's my packing list right here. So you see all the everything's checked because the last time I flew, I checked everything. I need to uncheck these because the next time I fly, I got to do it all over again. I got to uncheck everything and then I got to go through this list and make sure everything's checked before I go. So I got to bring my laptop and my charger. I like to bring paper towels just in case I need to, uh, like, I got bad sinuses sometimes. So if there's any, um, what do they call it, like pollen in the air, that I might need to blow my nose. I like to bring paper towels. I don't like to use tissues. So I bring paper towels. I put that on my list. I need my, I got two phones. I got this phone that I'm on right now, and I got another phone. This is what I'm recording right now to do this live on. So I bring my extra phone because that's where I do my recordings on. 
I bring some lip balm with me, uh, or some of y'all call this chapstick. I got my my glasses because I wear contact lenses. So when I take my glasses out at night, I mean my contacts out at night, I bring my glasses. Uh, dress shirt, dress shirts and suits because usually I'm wearing a suit. My shoulder bag, disinfectant wipes. And you get on a plane sometimes it, the seats are not clean, so I clean it off with disinfectant wipe. My charger cord, uh, any t-shirts that I need to wear, dress socks, ties, workout shirts. Um, a uh, copy of my book, maybe I might bring that with me. I might give it to somebody if I'm sitting next to someone on a plane. So if I want to bring my microphone, I might bring my mic that I use to record, like this mic right here. Sometimes I bring this with me. I don't always bring that with me. A uh, travel charger if I need that. Uh, shorts if I'm going to be working out wherever I go. So I got to bring my shorts, workout gear, you know, workout socks, water bottle, all that stuff. If I'm going to be working out while I'm there, wherever I'm going. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I have a list. The whole point is I have a list so I can go through the routine. So then every time that I'm packing my stuff for a trip, the whole point is I don't want to have to think about what needs to go in this luggage. I, I want to be sitting there like, hmm, what did I forget? What else do I need to add? Am I missing anything? If I have it all written down, now I don't have to think about anything because the list is doing all the remembering for me. Everybody with me? Good. Point number four. We are talking how to increase your productivity. These are all things. These are Everything I'm talking about here so far, folks, is what I call doing your homework. Doing your homework just means the work that you do ahead of the thing so that when it's time to do the thing, you don't have to think as much because you already did a whole bunch of the work ahead of time. This is what professionals do, everybody. We do our work ahead of time so that when it's time to perform, all we got to do is just perform. We don't have to think about what to do. We don't, we're not doing anything at the last minute. We already did the work at the beginning. Number four, be more productive. Find what works and keep doing it. This is a simple one, right? This is about having a formula. When you find something that works, just keep doing it over and over and over again. This is a discipline and consistency point, finding what works and keep doing it. When you have a formula that works and it is producing your desired result, here's what you change. Nothing. Don't change anything. All right, when you have a formula that works, do not change it. Keep using that formula until it doesn't work. Now, if your formula stops working, then you make adjustments. But as long as your formula is working, don't change anything. That formula produces results. And I shouldn't even have to say this, but it's interesting because I've noticed, you know, I work with a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people every day. Excuse me. One of the things that I notice with people is people get bored with consistency. People get bored with routine and habit and doing the same things the same way every time. A lot of people get bored with that stuff. So they're not able to stay consistent and they'll change things just to change them. People will change stuff just because they get bored with doing the same things the same way every time. Understand something, folks, as a professional, and I talk about this in this book right here called The Third Deck, The Decision that Separates the Pros from the Amateurs. Professionals don't get bored with consistent success. Now, if you're not getting success, if you're getting mediocre results, I don't have a problem with you getting bored with that and wanting to change that. But if you're getting results consistently, then you shouldn't be changing anything. Do not change your formula. Keep using it over and over again until it stops working. So this would be like a sports team, a football team in the NFL. If they keep running the ball and they keep getting yards on every running play and it keeps working and the defense hasn't stopped them, well, they don't have to throw the ball at all. They can just run the ball the whole game because the defense hasn't proved that they can stop them from running the ball. So let's just keep running the ball until they stop it. And if they don't stop it, we're going to do it the whole game and we're going to win. You're playing basketball against somebody and every time you drive to the right and go to the rim and get a layup, they can't stop you. Then you just do that the whole game and just score all your points off the same move over and over again. You don't have to do a different move just to prove that you're going to do a different move. I would see players say this to me like uh, back when I used to play ball. I used to put all these videos on YouTube and sometimes I, was, I would play somebody one on one. And in the one on one game, I would find a weakness that my opponent had, like a move that I was doing that they couldn't stop. And if they couldn't stop the move and I'm scoring and I'm winning, I would just keep doing the same move over and over again the whole game. And then somebody will leave a comment on the video and say, well, Dre, in your workout videos, you're doing all these different moves. But then in the game, you only did one move over and over again. Why don't you do some variety of moves? Why don't you do something different? You're just doing the same move over and over. They would say it kind of like as a, a criticism. And I would reply to them and explain to them, well, the purpose of me doing all the moves in a workout is just so I have, op I have options for when I get in the game. I'm going to give myself as many options as possible. But when I get in the game, the only thing I'm going to do in the game is whatever produces the result. Because the object of the game is not to do moves. The object of the game is to score points and win the game. So if I could do one move and score every time with that one move, guess what I'm going to do the whole game? I'm going to do one move the whole game. I might have a thousand moves available to me, a thousand moves in my arsenal. But in the game, 
if one move works, I'm going to just keep doing the same move until you stop it. And if you can't stop that one move, I'm going to do that one move the whole game, and I'm going to win the game. Because the object of the game is to win the game. It's not to do moves. Again, this is not a, it's not video games. You don't get points for doing moves. So this is the thing I want you all to understand. Do not get bored with producing consistent results. If you're consistently producing the results that you want, and you can do that over and over again over an extended period of time, we got a word for that. We call that excellence. We call that performance. Don't get bored with excellence. Don't get bored with consistently producing an outcome that you actually want to produce. I got a course called 30 Days of Discipline Inside Work on Your Game University that will help people with this. And don't ever, again, never, ever, ever change a formula that is working. Now, if you, again, if your formula is not working, change it. But if your formula, formula is working, do not change it at all. So this is about having a formula. Let me give you the definition for the word formula. All of you have heard the word before. Well, let's get, I like to give definitions of words so we're all on the same page here. And let me see, definition. Definition of the word formula is a mathematical relationship or rule expressed in symbols get a better definition. A list of ingredients for or constituents of something. That's a better definition. A set of chemical symbols. No, I don't like that one. And there's a bunch of different. Let me see. Okay, here's another one. A fixed form of words, especially one used in particular context or as a conventional usage or a method, statement, or procedure for achieving something, especially reconciling different aims or positions. A method, statement where's that definition method statement or procedure for achieving something that's what a formula is a procedure for achieving an outcome is a formula when you can produce a certain outcome remember what we talk about here at work on your game you are in a performance and a results based business so if you can produce a result with a certain method you need to keep doing that method as long as it keeps producing your result all right any of you get bored with producing results if you do then uh, you may be in the wrong place but you should not get bored with producing results Anything that produces a result, keep doing it until you can't do it anymore. Number five, we're talking the keys to productivity here today. Number five, be clear on what you want to produce. You need to know what you're producing. Now, this could have been the first point as well as point number five. Because the thing about productivity, everybody, is that you can produce a whole bunch of nonsense. You can produce things that do nothing for you. You can produce stuff that doesn't really move the move the needle for you in your life or in your business. You can produce a whole lot of stuff that, again, is in it, it's immaterial. It's not really doing anything to change the situation for you. So when you're clear about what you want to produce, that leads to effectiveness. When you're clear about what to, you want to produce and why you want to produce it, then you open a door to possibly be effective. Productive means you are producing something. Effective means you are producing something that is getting you towards your goal. Does everybody understand the difference? Because you can produce something. Again, I'm, let me give an example here. Let's say I was a salesperson. I could produce a whole lot of sales calls, meaning I could get on the phone, I could pull up my list of customers and prospects that I need to call, and I could call, I could make a thousand phone calls in a day to sales prospects, right? I make a thousand phone calls in a day and don't sell anything. Was I productive that day? The answer is yes. I was definitely, I was very productive because what did I produce? I produced a thousand phone calls. I did produce something. Productive just means you produce something. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as you are producing a thing, you are being productive by definition. But effective means you are getting to your desired outcome. See, you can't be effective unless you know what your outcome is. You can be productive without having a goal. You cannot be effective without a goal. To be effective, you have to have a goal. So if my goal is make a bunch of sales calls, then yes, you could say that's effective because all I did was make a bunch of calls, but I can make no money. I can make a thousand calls and make no sales. Was I productive? Yes. Was I effective? No. Now, if my effective goal is to make money, I need to make uh, five sales a day. Well, when I'm clear on that, now I know of those thousand sales, sales calls that I make, I need to make at least five sales out of it. Uh, hopefully, I make more than that. If I'm making a thousand calls, uh, you probably got to be a pretty bad salesperson to make a thousand calls only make five sales, depending on what you're selling. Like, with that caveat put in there. The whole point is you got to get clarity. That's what this is about. This is about clarity. Clarity is what is the goal. Any of you should know what your goal is before you set out trying to be productive. Before you try to be productive at anything, the first thing you got to ask yourself is what is the goal? Uh, Ron, what are you asking me to repeat? I might have already repeated it, but you tell me just in case I didn't. What is the goal? What's the outcome? When you know what the outcome is, now you open the door to possibly 
being effective. But I cannot create an effect if I don't know what my outcome is. So uh, for many entrepreneurs, and this is a challenge that I noticed, especially since the you know, creator economy came to be, is that many entrepreneurs are out there just doing stuff with no clear goals. They're just doing stuff and there's no real measure of how do I know this is actually getting me where I want to go or is this causing me to waste time? So this is a clarity point. What exactly am I trying to achieve? When you're clear on what you want, it becomes much easier to focus. Thus, it's easier to produce a higher level of force because you know what you're aiming for. If you don't, want, don't know what you're aiming for, you can't hit the target. You want to hit a target, you got to know what you're aiming for. You can't hit a target that you cannot see most of the time, all right, unless you happen to be some... Uh, Unless you happen to be like a, a professional sharpshooter, most of the time you got to see the target to hit it. All right, there's some people who hit targets blindfolded. Most of us can't do that. So, what's the desired outcome of the work you're doing today? All you working today, what's your desired outcome for today's work? Do you even know? What do you want to achieve by the end of this month? Do you know? What about this year? All right, how will you know that you've gotten there? What's your measure? How could, if we stopped you halfway through, how would you know that you're on the way? How would you know you're not on the way? How do you know you're on track? How do you know you're not on track? How would you know? This is clarity, folks. This is all this. Everything that I'm just asking you about is about clarity. How do I know that I'm on the right track to getting the outcome that I want to get to? If you cannot answer these questions, then you don't have clarity. Therefore, it will be very difficult for you to be effective, even though you're being productive. Again, I want to make sure you all understand there is a difference between productive and effective. Effective is about achieving an outcome. Productive is just about doing stuff. Again, in Work On Your Game University, which is the link that's pinned down there, I help people with all of this stuff. That's why I'm explaining it, because I notice these are the common challenges I see with entrepreneurs, at least the ones that uh, we work with here in the university. Number six, we are talking productivity tips. Less wasted time between activities. This is a big one right here. This is one that I myself make sure that I focus on. Less wasted time between activities. And the reason why this is a big one is because in the world that we all live in today, with these little things right here, this causes us to waste a whole bunch of time in between activities. Uh, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Put the number, put yes, put the word yes in the chat if you know what I'm talking about when I say that this right here causes us to waste a whole bunch of time in between activities. So let's say you had eight things you need to get done today. You finish thing number one and number two. And then what you do is, what you do after thing number two, before you get to thing number three, you pick this up and you start looking at it. Uh, you check your email, then somebody texts you, then uh, you check Twitter, then you check Instagram, then uh, somebody messages you on, on WhatsApp, and then uh, I don't know what apps y'all got on your phones. Y'all know what I'm talking about. All this time gets wasted, and here's what happens. In between task number two and number three, you waste about eight minutes. Then between three and four, about 15 minutes. Then between four and five, another 20 minutes. Then between five and six, another 16 minutes. Then between six and seven, another 32 minutes. And then... Before you know it, you're at the end of the day and you're like, damn, I didn't get everything done today. Why didn't you get everything done? Is it because you don't have time? No, it's not because you don't have time. You got the same amount of time every day. So anytime somebody says, I don't have time, that's a lie. None of us is ever out of time unless you're dead. All right, if you're alive, you got the same amount of time every day. It's a constant. It does not change. The reason that we end up not getting done the things that we want to get done in the day, one possibility is that maybe you just put too many things on your plate that you just can't, there's just not enough time for you to there is not enough time for you to do all of those things because you just put too many things on the list. But the real reason that causes many of us to not get everything done is because in between tasks, we are allowing time to leak out. There's these leaks of time. So if you add up all those times that I just said, it might come out to two and a half hours a day you use doing stuff that has nothing to do with your goals because you're checking your email and your text messages and then somebody called you and you're messaging back and forth with somebody then you're scrolling through Instagram, then you're leaving a comment on somebody's post and then somebody commented on your post and you're responding to them and checking your DMs and you're doing all this stuff that has nothing to do with your outcomes. And then you get to the end of the day and you didn't finish everything simply because there were leaks in your time that cost you two hours of the day. And if you would have got that two hours back, guess what? You would have got everything done with that two hours. You get what I'm saying? Let me ask you this question. When's the last time you got to the end of the day and you actually completed everything that was on your list? Can any of you tell me? When's the last time you had everything on your list done at the end of the day? Now, there's two reasons why you don't, you're not able to do this. One is that you might just put too many things on your list. So this is the reason why you're not getting everything done. You just put too many things on the list. Another reason why you can't get everything done is simply because time is leaking out. 
15 minutes here, eight minutes there, 32 minutes there, uh, 47 minutes there, uh, 50 minutes there, another hour there, simply because you're allowing time to leak out. So number one is the structure. How, what I just tell you, structure creates discipline. So you want to structure your day such that given the amount of time you have, I don't care if you're working as a, you're doing your business as a side hustle or a full-time thing, whatever amount of time you have, you need to set your day up such that you can actually do everything that's on the list. So don't put 50 things on the list if you don't, you only got two hours a day. You ain't got time to do 50 things, probably. And also, are you making sure that when you finish task number one and you're going to write in the task number two, then write in number three, write in number four, or are you picking up your phone and scrolling through Facebook, which costs you another 32 minutes? You get what I'm saying here? So that less time in between activities. When you finish doing task one, go right into the next one. All right, this is a conscious habit that you can develop through paying attention. All right, so AC, ACG math tutoring. All right, you got everything done two days ago. Good for you. So you're setting your day up structure wise in a way that makes sense for you. That's a good thing. We have the time, again, 24 hours in a day. Everybody understands that, right? So this, so this leaking of time, social media, email, text messages, et cetera, adds up to hours of lost opportunity. Any of you ever read any of those studies where they go into corporations and they study and find out how much time the people who work there are actually working every day? People are getting paid to be at work for what? Eight hours a day, right? You know that the average person working in a in in like a business, like work in an office building, you know how much time they spend working every day when they measured it? How much time they actually spend doing real work on a daily basis? You know how much time it is? It's less than two hours a day. And they're getting paid for eight hours. So Anybody who ever feels like they're underpaid working at a corporation, no, you are actually overpaid because you're, you're only getting paid. You're getting paid like four or five times the amount of work that you're actually doing. Most people who are working at companies, and they did it measuring people at companies because they can actually see what they're doing. But this applies to people who work from home as well. So any of you who work from home, this applies to you as well. Most people spend less than 25% of the hours that you claim you are quote unquote working. Less than 25% of that time is spent doing actual work. Why? Because of the leaks. And this right here is the number one reason for this. This is actually, this is the number one, um, what's the word? This is the number one enabler of this. This is not the reason. I can't, we can't blame it on an inanimate object. This is just a device. Like, this doesn't do anything. If I just sit here and, do, and don't do anything, it's just going to stay right there. It's not going to do anything. It's us. We are the reason. And this is the thing that enables us to do it. All right, so let's, let me make sure I say that right. So it's not the phone, it's you. And you're used to the phone that's causing this. So what you need to do is really get conscious about this. When you consciously think about it, you can turn anything into a habit. If you think about it and you're conscious about it for long enough, it becomes normal and your subconscious mind picks it up and then you start doing it naturally without thinking about it. So until you're using every minute of every day in an effective, conscious and focused way, then your problem is not a lack of time. So any of you has ever said, well, I don't have enough time. That's why I'm not getting everything done. Bullshit. That's not the reason why you're not getting everything done. The reason you're not getting everything done is because you are allowing time to be soaked up by things that have nothing to do with your business. Your problem is not a lack of time. Your problem is a lack of discipline and a lack of focus. Now inside Work On Your Game University, again, 30 days of discipline, work on your game system and coaching directly with me. I will help you with this. But first of all, we got to recognize the issue before we can fix it. Point number seven, we are talking here, productivity tips, how to be more productive. Number seven, batching your tasks. What is batching of tasks? Batching of tasks is a very simple concept. It simply means if you need, if you have several of a similar item to get done, just do them all at the same time instead of doing a little bit here, then a little bit there, then a little bit later. Just do them all at the same time. So, for example, people ask me, because I have a podcast called Work On Your Game. It comes out every single day. It's about 20, 30 minutes. It's a solo show. I don't have, I don't interview anybody, no guests. It's just me talking for about 20 minutes a day. Basically, it's like this. So, on my when people listen to my podcast people often ask me dre do you record a new episode every single day or do you record several episodes at, at one time so that you get multiple done at once the answer is the second one i record several episodes in one day so if you follow my instagram story on days that i'm recording you'll notice you'll see me recording over and over and over again you'll see me doing the intro like welcome to the show you're now tuned into the show where you Learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, confidence, put yourself out there boldly and authentically. You see me saying it over and over again. I'm not showing you the same video. That's because I'm recording multiple episodes. So this week I recorded this week. I recorded four episodes on Monday. Then on Tuesday, I recorded. I think I didn't record on Tuesday. Wednesday, I recorded two more. Then yesterday was Thursday. I recorded 
three more. So over the course of the week, I recorded nine episodes over the course. So I batched the episodes. And if, if there was enough time in the day, I'll just record all of them in, in one day. But I like recording them on different days because I have a fresher mind. I might have a new idea. I might, might have a new way of thinking about it. But I usually record three days out of the week. I record three or four episodes each time. It's seven days in a week. So if you do the math on that. I'm always adding extra episodes to the queue. So if I ever go on vacation or I lose my voice or whatever, whatever reason I'm not recording, I still got extra episodes in a can. So right now, work on your game masterclass. I'm probably about 20, 30 episodes up. I'm um, recorded up to, I'm just looking at the number of episodes that I'm at. So I'm looking at the number that I'm at. I'm just giving y'all an example here of what I do. So I'm up to 2603, 20, I'm about 30 episodes up, just about, I'm 28 episodes up to be exact right now. So I got 28 more episodes recorded than what I put out. So right now, today's episode was 2575. I'm recorded 28 more episodes that if I wanted to take the next 28 days off and not record anything, those episodes are already ready and done. That's the point. I'm not telling you that to impress you, but to impress upon you, you should be doing the same thing for your stuff. So anything you do over and over and over again, you should make a whole bunch of them so that you don't have to do it every single day. And then if in case you have a day when you can't do it or you don't want to do it, you don't need to do it. Let's say you got a sick child or something happens to you or your, your internet goes out or whatever the situation is. You're not able to do that thing. You already got 30 of them extra already waiting. You get what I'm saying? And this can, you can do this with um, speaking tasks, any kind of writing tasks, anything that you're putting out, especially if you do evergreen material. So I don't talk really about current events on a regular basis. If I do talk about a current event, it'll be like a one-off thing. Most of my material is evergreen. Like this that you're listening to right here, you could listen to this video that I'm explaining. This video, I'm, when I put this on YouTube, you can watch this video in 2037 and the material is still going to be relevant because everything I'm saying here is not time sensitive. As long as we're still using phones, that's the only thing that I said that might be time sensitive. But this is all evergreen material. And the whole point is any of you who does anything evergreen, like writing, all my written material, any of you who's on my email list, who here gets my emails? Put, put in the, put uh, email, put the word email in the chat there if you, any of you get my emails. Notice most of the, the material that I write about my emails is evergreen. Even if I talk about a current event, I frame it in such a way that even if it's not the current thing now, it's still relevant even if you come across it two years later. The whole point is I write a whole bunch of material at the same time. So right now on my laptop, it's closed, so I can't see it. But on my laptop, I got like 10 emails that I've already written that I didn't even put into my into my um, my autoresponder yet. Yes, this will be on YouTube. I didn't put in my autoresponder yet. And my autoresponder is simply just the uh, automation, which makes emails come out over and over again. So any of you who gets my emails and I send those emails out, I, I mean, any of you gets my emails, how often do you get an email from me? How many days a week do you get an email? And not everybody gets them the same amount of time because people are on different spots in my automations. But we'll see whoever, whoever leaves a comment. But I would guess because I have my own email address in my automation. So I see what's coming out. But everybody's at a different spot in the automations. The whole point is I send emails out probably, I would say, five to six days a week. And there's an email coming out from me. So always training says every morning. So there you go. That's seven days a week. So I know I'm sending at least five or six a week. There might be a day where you don't get one. But for the most part, I'm sending emails out five, six days a week. And I got a lot of people on my email list. Last month, I probably sent close to, I think I sent like 850,000 emails total. I want to send a million. This month, I might send a million emails. We'll see. I'm trying to get to a million. I got to have more people on my list and I got to write more stuff. But the whole point is, I'm not telling, again, I'm not telling you that to impress you either, but to impress upon you that all of this stuff is batched. So any of you who gets emails from me every day at four or five in the morning, I'm not waking up at four in the morning, writing an email and sending it to you. I already wrote that email. I wrote that email three weeks ago. I just set it up and schedule it so that they come out every day so that you're getting the emails every day on my YouTube channel. Those videos you can schedule like most social media apps. You can schedule your stuff. Instagram just recently added scheduling so you can schedule your posts on Instagram. So any of you who's like, I need to post on social media more often. What's stopping you? All you need to do is take one day. Take a couple hours or however long it takes you, make all the content you need to make and just schedule all of it. So schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So your whole week of material is already scheduled. YouTube, you can schedule your posts. LinkedIn recently, because LinkedIn uh, always annoyed me that LinkedIn didn't allow you to schedule articles. Like you could write an article on LinkedIn, but you couldn't schedule it. I don't know why they didn't have scheduling, but they finally put that in there. So now you can schedule articles. And if you want to write on LinkedIn, I think Twitter doesn't have scheduling yet, but I guarantee you it's coming. Facebook has scheduling 
And those are the apps that I use the most. I don't think TikTok has scheduling, but if they don't, I guarantee you it's coming. So Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, TikTok. What's the other one? Instagram I already said. Twitter doesn't have it, but I'm sure it's coming. Or if they do have it, I just didn't know about it. All these apps allow scheduling. So all of you can just batch your material. And actually, even with Twitter, I use this app called Buffer. Some of you use um, Hootsuite, and there's a bunch of them. There's, a, there's like 50 apps that do this. They all do the same thing, where you can schedule all your posts for these applications. So any of you follows me on Twitter or uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, because those, those are the places where I post like uh, textual status updates, or I might post text with a little photo. It's not like Instagram. My Instagrams are different. But on those apps, I use this app called Buffer, where I can just schedule all my posts. So for example, in Buffer right now, on my my queue on Twitter, I had like 60 of these, but I, I, that was like two weeks ago. So I got 18 scheduled posts on Twitter, 18 on LinkedIn, and those are all come out when they come out. I just got them scheduled for, to come out. I got a cer certain posting schedule. So you could do that with Instagram as well. You can do it with Facebook, all apps. So this is how you can batch your work. This is a way to be more productive. So your stuff is coming out all the time, but you don't have to be doing the work every single day all the time for it to come out. Remember that focus is a force multiplier, folks. So if you're already focused on task A, you might as well do a whole bunch of it all at one time so that you don't have to every day get back into that mode. If I could just get into that mode and I could write 10 articles right now, now I've got my next 10 days of articles already written. So now I don't have to get focused on writing every day. Now, there are benefits to writing every day depending on what you're doing and how you want to set up your business. But I just want you all to understand what I'm talking about. One thing that I'm going to do today, I know I need to go into my CRM, which is basically the uh, customer uh, relationship management software that I have. I need to follow up on a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of people I need to follow up with. And I'm going to do all of it at once. I'm going to batch that task. I'm going to follow up with like 100 people today. And, but I already know what I got to do. I already have the system in place to do it. So it's not like I got to think about what to say to each person. We already have the templates and the emails and all that stuff set up. So all I got to do is just go through it like this. It's just a matter of me going through each one and getting everything done. And when it comes to the inbox, my email inbox, how many emails I got right now? I know that some of y'all got some crazy uh, amount of unread emails in your inbox. I don't like that. I got 22 unread emails in my inbox. By the end of the day today, it's going to be zero. I don't like having unread emails in my inbox. I like to be at zero emails in my inbox. When I used to play basketball and I used to put all these videos on YouTube, you know what I would do? Every day when I went to the gym, I would record like 20 videos. I record, well, I record material that became 20 videos every day in the gym. So I was batching those tasks. So the way I was able to put out so much content was because I was batching the work every single day and do a whole bunch at once instead of doing a little bit at a time. Usually it's easier to do a bunch at once than it is to do a little bit at a time because you don't have to keep getting your mind back into that mode. You get into that mode once, do a whole bunch of work, and then allow that work to work for you moving forward. Number eight. We are talking keys to productivity. Number eight is structure. We talked about this already. Structure means, here's what I mean when I say structure here. Create an environment that is conducive to productivity. That's what I mean when I say structure. Create an environment that is conducive to productivity. This morning, for example, I went to the boxing gym, worked out with my boxing trainer. If I wanted to do yoga, for example, I probably wouldn't go to a boxing gym. I would go to a yoga studio. I want to do Pilates, I would go to a Pilates studio. If I wanted to uh, do cardio and run, I would probably just go outside and run. Understand you need to be in an environment that is conducive to the thing that you're trying to do. So what is the thing you're trying to do and is your environment conducive to that outcome? If I wanted to play basketball, I wouldn't go to a boxing gym, I would go to a basketball gym. And if I'm on a box, I'm not going to a basketball gym, I'm gonna go to a boxing gym. So, and again, this is a simple example, but you'd be surprised by how many people are trying to do thing A when they're in an environment that's set up for B, C, D, and E. Or is your environment set up to actually help you do the thing that you want to do? For me, when it comes to recording, y'all notice that y'all can't see the room that I'm in here, my home office, but the, the backdrop is the same every single time. This environment is conducive to me doing this. I know that I'm going to be getting on camera a lot. I know I do my reels on camera. I do my podcasts on camera. I appear on a lot of other people's podcasts. I need to be on camera. I do live streams. I need to be on camera. So guess what? The number one consideration was when I set up the space. How do I make this look good to be on camera? All right, why? I'm setting up the environment to be conducive to my outcomes. Everybody understand what I'm saying? And conducive to my processes and what I'm trying to do. So I got a ring light right here in front of me. So my lighting is always good. I got another light over there. Of course, there's a light on the ceiling. 
there's light coming from over here. It's all set up the right way. I got a microphone right here, so I sound good. That mic is set up there. And if I'm recording on the computer, I got this microphone over here. I got my notes over here, any notes that I need to use. I got all my lighting set up and I got my water right here. You'll notice I keep sipping from this water. I drink a lot of water every day. And when you're talking this much, you might need it. Boom. Again, what am I showing you? I'm showing you that I set this environment up to make it easy to do the things that I want to do. This is a this is a, a big one that can help a whole bunch of you. You need to look at your environment. And when I say environment, I don't just mean the physical space that you're in. I mean your whole life, your whole life. And ask yourself, am I set up? Is my life set up to be conducive to the outcomes that I want to achieve? <laughs> this is a good question you should be asking yourself. You should ask yourself this question all the time. You should ask yourself this question at least once a week. Is my environment set up for me to do the things that I want to do? All right, if you want to be an athlete, is your environment set up? Is your life set up to, for you to be an athlete? All right, do you have a place to work out? Do you got people to work out with? All right, do you know what you're working on? Do you have a training process? You have a trainer. You have these things set up. You want to be an author. Do you have a, a system set up to where you can sit down and actually write every single day? You want to be an influencer or a creator. Do you have a, a place set up where you can actually record and make your material? All right. Do you have these things set up? And you'd be surprised how many people want to do thing A, but they don't have anything set up to make it easy for them to do thing A. So what happens is when your environment is not set up for you to do the things you want to do, what you get is what we call friction. Friction is when it's very difficult for you to do a thing. It's not that you can't do it, but it becomes much harder to do it. Like if I didn't have this environment set up the way that it is, and every time I wanted to record, I had to pull out the lights and set up the lights, and I got to turn them on and plug them in and move it over here. And then I had to set, I had to move my desk around, and I had to move the tripod around. And I had to go find the microphone. I had to do all these things. I had to do like 30 steps every time I wanted to record. Guess what I would do? I would record a lot less. Why? Because the friction gets in my way. But since it's so easy for me, I got this environment set up right, without getting out of this seat. I can record a podcast episode. I can record, re appear on somebody else's podcast. I can record a YouTube video. I can do a live stream. I can do a Zoom call. I can, do all, I can record a video that goes into my university. I can do all of that without getting up from this chair. And that is what I mean when I say having an environment that is conducive to your desired outcomes. You need to set things up to be easy for you to do the things that you want to do. Understand, folks. Discipline is not some hard nose, bang your head against the wall, make yourself do stuff. All right? That's not what discipline is, even though some people think that's what it is. In my book, The Third Day, this book right here, you can get it for free by going to thirddaybook.com. I'll put the link in the chat for any of you who uh, wants to get this book. Book's free, just cover the shipping. I explain in this book that if you want to be more disciplined and you want to be more consistent in your productivity, what you need to do is set up the environment to make it easy. There's a way to make discipline easy. Discipline does not have to be hard. It's not supposed to be hard. Discipline is a byproduct of structure. Anybody hear what I just said? Discipline is a byproduct of structure. You do not get discipline and then create structure. No, you get the structure and it produces discipline. How so? You set things up to make it easy to be disciplined. All right, you know, discipline does not have to be hard. It's not supposed to be hard. So any of you... If your discipline feels like punishment, that's because your structure is off. You have poor structure. That's why it's hard to be disciplined. And you are, you're basically doing the equation backwards. That's why it's not working for you. So the whole point is you want to set things up to make it easy for you to do the thing that you want to do. So some people, some people, they like to be in a place where there's a bunch of people going around. Like I used to, one thing that I used to do, this is probably like it's 2023. So like two years ago, this is what I used to do. And this is before I was wearing suits every day. This is when I used to wear a T-shirt and shorts. I would go outside and I would sit at like a Starbucks or like Capital One Cafe, like coffee shop type places. And I would sit either inside or outside and I would do my work on my computer there. And it was cool because it's Miami, the weather's nice. And, but it would be all these people walking around, It'd be people walking past me all the time. And that can be somewhat distracting. And that didn't really bother me. I actually liked it because sometimes I would meet people and I would, I, there are people who are friends of mine to this day that I've met just because they saw me sitting out there all the time. They would stop and talk to me or somebody knew me from the internet and they would stop and talk to me and things like that. And then people in the neighborhood would just get to know me because they saw me all the time. But at the same time, it would be distracting because sometimes I'm trying to get focused on something and then somebody would come talk to me or some homeless person would try to ask me for money or just some random straggler would just want to have a conversation. And it was, breaking my focus it was breaking my concentration so now i don't do that anymore now i'm not outside now i'm at home nobody can nobody can interrupt me while i'm here 
Like I can't be interrupted while I'm doing this. Therefore, I can do more focused work. But that works for me. Some people, well, some, there are some people who are authors, for example, they like to go sit in a Starbucks and have a bunch of people milling around them and they do their best work like that. Or like somebody who writes music. Maybe they want to be around human beings because it gives them energy so they can write music. And that's what works for the, that's what works for them. You need to know what works for you and you need to set up your environment so that you can consistently be in a place like that. So you can do your work consistent. I personally prefer an environment that I have complete control over because uh, we know what happened like two, three years ago. Right. When COVID happened, let's say you like to sit at a, a coffee shop every day. Well, when COVID happened, you couldn't sit at the coffee shop anymore. The coffee shop is closed. Right. So you couldn't do that anymore. So now what you want to do? I prefer environments that I have complete control over where I set that environment up as best I can to do what I want to do. But that's just me. You decide what works for you. But all of these things, again, the whole point is structure creates discipline. Point number nine, we're talking keys to productivity here. Number nine is delegate and outsource. Delegate and outsource. Now, some of you might think when I say those two words that that means you need to hire people. Yes, it is part, part of that is hiring people, but it's not completely hiring people. You can delegate and outsource without hiring anybody. Let me tell you how. Delegate and outsource means passing jobs over to something or someone who can do the job either just as good as you, close enough to you, or better than you. That's what it means to delegate and outsource. For example, right now we have uh, AI-powered software is a big thing now, right? Like chat GPT. Some of you know about that. If you don't, you should know about it because there are a lot of people who are doing their writing work using AI software. They're not actually doing the writing themselves. They're letting the AI write it. You just ask it to write something. They write something for you. So then you want to write articles. You could go to chat GPT and say, hey, give me a, a 300 word article on discipline. And it will literally give you a 300 word article on discipline. You can copy and paste it and post it and put your name on it. And nobody would know the difference. Well, people could find out. But for the most part, nobody gives a damn. The whole point is. You can delegate that work to something other than yourself. The great thing about the world that we live in today with the advances in technology, especially online, is that you can get a lot of work done by software, not a human, but by software that is cheaper than a human. And you don't have to do it anymore. You can pass that work off to somebody else. That's the great thing about um, the world that we're in now. So, for example, I'm an author. I've written 33 books. When you write a book. They, you send your manuscript to, with a traditional publisher, you send your manuscript to an editor. The editor reads through everything that you wrote, checks all the, the spelling errors and grammatical errors and sends it back to you and then you'll go back and forth. Good news is now that a lot of editors are not going to be needed as much because you can put your manuscript into some software and the AI software will read your book and they will point out the same grammatical errors that the human used to and the AI software doesn't need to get paid the way the human does. So what's happening is a lot of human beings jobs are no longer needed because software is doing it in its place. And that's a different conversation here. But the whole point is you can outsource work to software, folks. You can outsource work to technology, not just to a human being. So when I say delegate and outsource, this does not mean you need to go hire a whole bunch of human beings. It means you need to look around for the software that might be able to do certain jobs that you're doing that you don't need to do anymore. And you might not even know it. You don't even know it. But there are jobs being done by software that you don't even do right now. You can pass that work off and save yourself a ton of time. So there's a whole lot of ways that you can outsource. Let me give you another example, a more everyday example. I like to get um, organic produce from Whole Foods. So I like to get my I eat organic spinach from Whole Foods. I like to get my bananas, uh, apples, that kind of stuff. Because I get meals delivered by meal delivery service. That's another form of outsourcing. Instead of me going to the grocery store and buying um ingredients and looking up recipes and cooking meals. I hire a meal delivery service, Health Rush down here in South Florida. They bring the meals for me. I don't have to do anything. I only had I just outsource that work to them. If I want some groceries from Whole Foods, instead of me going to Whole Foods, which takes time, all I do is go on the I go on the Amazon app, because Amazon owns Whole Foods now. They bought Whole Foods. So here's the Amazon app. I go to groceries and you see those two little options pop up. I click on Whole Foods. And now anything I want from Whole Foods is right there. So now I can just put these in my cart and order it. And I think you paid $9.95 for delivery. The $9.95 that I pay for delivery from Whole Foods is I'm buying an hour or two of time that it takes me to go there and come back. Is that worth it? Is my time worth at least $9.95? The answer is yes. So this is another way to outsource and delegate, folks. So I want you all to, when you hear those words, outsource and delegate, I want you to think a little bit bigger than just, 
oh, it's I got to hire people. No, that's not all what it means. It means buying time, using your money to buy time and also sometimes using uh, software that doesn't cost anything to buy time. So outsourcing, that's what outsourcing is. So we got three more. Number 10, we are talking keys to productivity, self-improvement, self-improvement. What does this have to do with productivity? Well, it's very simple. The better you get at something, usually you'll be more productive at it. You'll be able to do it better, faster, and at a, a level of higher uh, quality because you got better at it. Can we agree? See, if I get better at speaking, then it's easier for me to do a live stream. If I get better at recording, it's easier for me to make more episodes of my podcast. If I get better at writing, it's easier for me to write my next book. So anything, if I get better at selling, then it's easier for me to be productive at producing money for my business. So anything that you get better at, when you invest in improving yourself, then you create opportunities for yourself to be more productive. So productivity is aided by improvement. This is why you know, my company is called Work On Your Game, because the more you work on your game, the better you'll be at producing your desired outcomes. This is why it's worth it to invest in performance. It's worth it to invest in self-improvement. So when you hire a coach or you hire a consultant or you join somebody's program or you uh, get into somebody's mastermind, you are not only investing in the information that they have and the access and the insight, but you're also investing in getting better yourself because the better you get, the easier it will be for you to produce the outcomes that you're already trying to produce. So you'll be able to do more in less time. And this allows you to be more efficient at doing what you do. So why does it matter? Get things done faster and more efficiently. The reason why this matters is because we're all on the clock. Now, you don't have unlimited time in your life. At some point in your life, you're going to be out of time. So you need to make sure you are getting as much done as you can with the time that you do have so that uh, you are making the most of this time you have in life uh, before, your, before your time runs out. Uh, we call that death. Squeezing all the orange, squeezing all the juice out of your orange. So you need to make this a you need to make this a non-negotiable in your life of getting more done in less time without sacrificing quality. The way you do that is by improving, getting better at what you do. You get more done in less time by improving yourself. And you need to invest in that. Invest your money into getting better at what you're doing. Number 11, we are talking keys to productivity. Number 11, goals and appreciation. Yes, goals and appreciation help you be a more productive individual. How so? Because when you're clear about what outcomes you want to achieve and then you appreciate yourself for reaching them, well, you're giving yourself encouragement. Uh, can we agree that we all feel better when we're being encouraged and praised for what we do? Of course. Now, that does not mean you always get encouragement and praise. Sometimes you might need to be told, hey, you're not doing your job. Sometimes you need to be held accountable or sometimes you need constructive criticism. But when you do get things done the way that you're supposed to, then the appreciation that you get from that will probably give you a boost to move you to do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. But that has to be earned. All right, you don't get appreciation for not achieving the goal. You only get appreciation when you actually achieve the goal the way you're supposed to. So make sure you are setting goals for yourself. A goal is simply an expectation of future success. You set that goal of your future success. You achieve that goal and then you appreciate yourself for doing so. The more you do this, the more productive you will be in life, but you have to actually reach the goal. All right, you do not, this is not something that you're just owed by default. You have to actually do something to get praise. And number 12, this is the last one. We are talking keys to productivity, using productivity tools and technology, which I just touched on a couple points ago. Understand that technology does not necessarily mean computers and coding and uh, some kind of electronic thing. The actual, let me see if we can get a definition here. The actual definition of the word technology has nothing to do with computers, by the way. Technology means the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, especially in industry. The application of scientific knowledge, that's the definition of, <clears throat> excuse me, technology. Technology just means if you get a new process for doing something that you didn't know about before, right? Right now in this live that you just listened to, you might have heard me explain something that you never thought about before. That's a form of technology because I'm giving you some scientific knowledge that you can apply to anything that you're doing that will help you do it in a more efficient way. That is a definition of technology. So that's all it is. Anything you can use for a practical purpose. So you, all of you've heard about, again, artificial intelligence software, like, excuse me, chat GPT. These are things that can replace you using your own brain power. Uh, speech to text technology. When I'm writing out notes for my podcast, for example, sometimes I use the speech to text technology, meaning I just get on my phone and I start talking into it and it will write down what I'm saying. 
instead of me typing because I can talk faster than I can type. I can talk, I can type pretty fast, but I can talk even faster. That allows me to get the notes done quicker. And again, what I just tell you, getting more done in less time while not sacrificing quality. All it is is a part of it. So this allows you to buy time. Sales funneling software. Any of you know anything about sales funnels? What does a sales funnel do? It allows you to sell multiple products to a customer all in one shot without having to bring them back to the sales page or back to your website or back to your uh, cart. You can make a whole bunch of sales at once. So if you come through one of my sales funnels, listen, I've written 33 books. You see these books behind me. You come to get one book, I'm going to offer you four more and then I'm going to offer you four more. I might offer you 10 books before you get out of the funnel, before you put your wallet away. Why? Because that allows me to make multiple sales at once instead of me selling you one book. Then tomorrow I say, go buy another one. Then the next day say, go buy another one. Why not sell you all of them at once? So this is a way of using technology in order to make multiple sales at one time. And businesses have been doing this for years, by the way. We are all just, it's becoming more mainstream for people to understand this. But this is a way of you getting more done in less time, again, without sacrificing quality. So with all that said, let me recap these points here. I'm going to recap all 12 points that I just gave you. If you got a question, put it in the comment section. I'm going to recap these real quick. Any questions, comments, put them in the comments. I'm going to address them right now, and that'll be that. Keys to productivity. Again, definition of productivity is to cause a particular result or situation to happen or to come into existence. Number one, pay less attention to what other people are doing. This is all about focus. Number two, same things the same way every time. This is about process. Number three, set routines and allow nothing to break them. That's about discipline. Number four, find what works and keep doing it. This is discipline and consistency. Number five, be clear on what you want to produce, which leads to effectiveness. That is about clarity. Number six, less wasted time between activities. That is a discipline and a habit. Number seven, batching tasks. That's about just being getting more done in less time while you are already focused because focus is a force multipliers. Easy to stay focused when you're already focused. Number eight, structure. Create an environment that is conducive to productivity. You just want to make, you know, set yourself up to win. Number nine, delegate and outsource. This is how you can make sure you're being productive at things that, make sure you're not being productive at things that you don't need to be productive at. Be productive at what matters. Number 10, self-improvement. This is so literally about working on your game. Number 11, goals and appreciation. Being clear as to what outcomes you wish to achieve and then appreciating yourself for doing it. Number 12, productivity tools and technology. Technology does not mean computers and coding. It just means practical scientific knowledge that you can apply in a practical way. What's going on? Yeah, your boy Solo, good to see you here. So everybody, I just gave you the keys to productivity that you can use in your business, you can use in your life. I will put this video on, uh, it'll be on the, in the archive here on IG. It will be on YouTube as well. By the way, I put out a podcast every single day called Work On Your Game. It is free of charge every single morning. Just go to workonyourgamepodcast.com. You can get the uh, Work On Your Game podcast. You can subscribe to the Work On Your Game podcast. And every day when it comes out, you'll be getting it. I send out a daily motivation text free of charge every morning to everybody in my text community. You can get that by texting me at that number. Just send a text to that number right there. Say, Dre, let me get that daily motivation. Number is 305-384-6894. Tomorrow morning when the next one comes out, you'll be getting that. And I send other texts as well besides the daily motivation. Every once in a while, I send some other stuff as well there. And what else? Work on your game university, most importantly. This is the only place that you can be coached by me, the only place you can work with me directly, the only place you can get access to all my frameworks around mindset, around business strategy, around systems for your business, and around accountability and execution, and also the only place where you'll be able to talk to me on a regular basis, share with me what you're doing, ask me questions, get my feedback, get my help on what you're working on. All of that happens in one place. That is Work On Your Game University. You get access to that by going to workonyourgameuniversity.com. That link is, well, it's right here in the pinned comment. If you're watching this live, it'll be down in the description if you're watching this on replay. And that is that, everybody. Y'all have a great Friday. Uh, make sure you set some goals for yourself. Set goals and then just go to work on those goals. That becomes your plan. All right, everybody, we out here. Work on your game.